So let's start with the first basic part, the stance. The best way to get your stance, if you're right-handed, you want to stand side by side and step forward with your left foot. Of course, if you're a southpaw, a left-hander, you want to step with your right foot. I'm right-handed, so I'll do a traditional. Left foot forward in a normal step. Now, you want to be in a way that you can rock. You want your back heel up. If your back heel is flat, you're going to be driving around the club foot. The only time you may put that back heel down is when you're coming forward with a punch to get leverage. Other than that, you want your back heel up and turn slightly out at about 2 o'clock. An action stance, a stance of movement, a stance of attack. In any sport, it comes down to fundamental basics. If you hit a baseball, shoot a basketball, drive a golf ball, it's all a few basic mechanics. So, again, starting with the basic mechanics, step forward so you can rock. Keep the back heel up. You take your hands. Basically, you want to take your thumbs and put them on what I call the off switch. The off switch is your temple. We've all heard of the temple. If you hit hard enough in the temple, you can die. Why is that? We all have ganglia. Ganglia is a mass of soft tissue. And the ganglia is between our jaw and our skull, some above our lip, and some above our eyebrows. When you shock the ganglia, it shuts off the brain. We don't have a baseball bat to club someone in the back of the head with to knock them out. So we have to rely on our fist driving the jaw into the ganglia. To give you an example of how sensitive the ganglia is, you can take your index finger and just go whack like this on someone's top lip and you can ring their bell because you shot the ganglia there. That will always be our target in our mythology in punching. Is we're not just throwing a punch out that means nothing. We're throwing a punch out with intention on it. We want to attack the ganglia, drive the jaw up, hit it square on, anything it takes. No punch is wasted. A bad punch can get you knocked out. Either you're punching to hit, you're punching to counter, you're punching to set up and draw someone in, you're punching to grade the, the judge your distance, but you never just throw punches out senselessly. So back to our stance again. You're right-handed, step forward with your left foot. Keep your back heel up, point it slightly out. Take these hands, as I mentioned, put the thumbs on your temples, the off switches, and make like a Mickey Mouse thing. Okay, now all you do is to you take your elbows and you bring them down. You keep your hands open and relaxed. If your hands are tight and tense, you're going to telegraph your punches more because you're going to move slower, more lethargically. If your hands are wide open, you're going to slap yourself in the face. Plus, if your fists are too tight, you can get hit in the fist and punch yourself. Plus, if your fists are too tight, look at all that area I can hit you. Keep your hands relaxed and open. With your hands half open, look how a shock absorber is created with these fingers. Obviously, in the throes of a battle, you may not always think about that. Instinct might get you to cover up like that. But at all times, basic one-on-one -on -one boxing, keep the shock absorber there. So absorb is the shock, common sense. Thumbs on the temples, elbows down and in. You want to keep the left in front and the right in back. The left is more or less going to be like a shield. Stuff coming at you, you're going to be able to block so much just off your left, off your forearm. Your right is more like your sword, more like your weapon. You keep that in back. Okay, temples or off switches. Elbow straight down. Keep the right in back and the left in front. You rock. You don't hop. If you hop, you're off the ground. When you're off the ground and suspended in the air, you are vulnerable. You can't move, you can't hit, you are a sitting duck. Always keep one foot on the ground at one time. So again, left foot forward so you can rock, back heel up, pointing out, Mickey Mouse, elbows down, right hand back, left hand in front for your shield. Now you rock, you go back and forth, you slide. Why do you slide? Because you want to keep one foot on the ground, right? So you slide when you go backward. You go forward, you step with the front, you slide the back. You go back, you step with the back, slide the front. You go to the left, you step with the left, 
Slide the back, you go to the right, you step to the right, slide the front. Forward, back. Forward, back. Forward, back. I'm sliding to the right. Slide to the left. Slide. I'm always ready with that one foot on the ground for a quick reaction if there's something coming because we don't want to get ourselves knocked out. Back to our stance. You crouch. You don't bend. You crouch. Your elbows and arms will always protect your body and your ribcage. Your hands will always be up in what I call the holsters. Always in the holsters. You never protect your body like this. You never protect your head like that or you'll get knocked out. You protect your body by crouching and you always take your head with your hands. Never drop your hands and keep your head up because four, six punches that long, you're knocked out. You bring the head with your hands. You block the body by crouching, by crouching, by crouching, by crouching. Never like this. Now, obviously, in the throes of the ring, things change. Speaking from experience, obviously, when you're sparring, you're fighting, you might vary a little bit with your hands. You can't always be like a statue. But the basic fundamental mechanics is what I'm teaching you. And you keep it here, and you keep it there, and you keep it here, and you keep it there. And you do a little head move. Bob and you weave. What is a bob and a weave? Well, bob is like it says, a fisherman's bobber. A weave is like it says, like your mother it might weave you a sweater, right? So it's bob and weave, bob and weave, bob and weave. Look at my hands. They never leave my hand, they leave my off switches. I may not always hold my thumb there. But I make sure I'm always touching myself to know my hands are where they belong. I may bring them off the Oscars at times, but I'll always touch it. Because that way I know my hands are where they belong. Let's do the first punch. Let's start with the left jab. The left jab is probably, in my opinion, is the most important punch you have. Look at Muhammad Ali. Sure, he's an old-fashioned guy, but he made a living with that left jab. He would stick it out there short and big, and then when someone came in, boom, he'd straighten it out and make a power blow out of it. A left jab generally is used to, get, to gauge your distance, maybe to sucker somebody in, to kind of bait someone to make the nose bleed by popping it over the top, but it can be a knockout punch, and this is how. When you throw the jab, the most important move you first do is you come forward. With any punch, the most important secret to any punch is you keep your punches in front. If you ever go like this with the jab, guess what? You're knocked out. I can throw six to eight hard punches in a second. Yes, I can. And that's because I keep my punches in front. Never like this. You do this, you're knocked out. So when you throw that jab, you keep, keep it in front. You keep your power. You get your power by coming forward. Let's take Bruce Lee. We all know Bruce Lee, I'm sure. He got famous for a four-inch punch. He took a guy. Touched him like that, closed his fist, and he knocked the guy over in a chair. How did he do that? Let me show you the improvement. Very simple. You go like this, close the fist. Simple as that, step forward. Simple as that, step forward. So let me show you again. Come forward, keep the head down, and you want to shoot that uphill. If it's at all possible, the most effective jab is going to be uphill. Uphill. If you can't, you get uphill with your crouch. You come forward. Pretend you have a stick and you want to poke someone in the eye. How are you going to do that? You're going to go like this. If you're a fencer and you're fencing, how are you going to do it? You're going to go like this. With the jab, you want to poke them in with the jab. Bam! Up, hard. My head's protected because I got it tucked into my shoulder. And of course, this hand is on the off switch wherever anything coming back at me. So with the jab, again, there's several different ways you can do it. Again, Muhammad Ali 
was the artist at? You flip it out, you flip it out, you flip it out, you flip it out. Someone has the guard up, you flip it out, you have the guard up, you go over the top, over the top, over the top. You do that enough times, someone's nose starts bleeding, might take some fight out of them. And there's two, that, two types of people in this world. People who can drink their own blood and get tougher, or people that quit over a nosebleed. Boxing 101, we'll drink our own blood and get tougher. And I'm not kidding. So you go over the top and bait, over the top and bait, over the top and bait. You suddenly four, guess what you do? Boom! Straighten that out on his chin. If at all possible, move left when you do it. Now granted, if someone throws the left on you, you go to the right and get them. But most likely, the best way to throw that left jab is to step left and throw left. Attack the ganglia. You're going to hit the jaw a lot easier on the side and put all that force into one bunch of ganglia than hit it straight on and separate the force between two sides. Much better knockout on the side of the chin than the point. That's why you see more this way. You get all the force in one ganglia. So again, bait, bait, over the top, bait, bait, over the top, bait, moving left, moving left. He starts getting frustrated, comes in, guess what? Boom! Straighten it out. Knock that punch. Okay. One thing that's important about the jab too, is you always hear about the old one, two, left, right. So we'll move on to the right hand. If uh, I throw my left jab, and I can hit him with my left jab, because at the end of the jab, I have so much more reach when I throw the right. Because the number one rule to throw in a right hand, just like coming forward on the left is number one, number one on the right is to turn your shoulder first. You don't wind up, you don't wind up back like this before you throw it, because again, you're knocked out. You throw it from in front, and you get the power by turning your shoulder, getting the elbow up, and following through. So, you have the left. You're tagging the guy. You're baiting the guy. Maybe you're putting some hard parts, but straighten it out. So what happens when I turn my shoulder? Look at all the extra room I got. I got so much more distance, I can punch my fist a foot past his head. Whenever you throw a punch, the power comes about two-thirds to maybe 70% of the way through. The point of contact is the most important part. It's when you connect. If you push a car, if you push a person in football, you're not gonna get it from out here or like this. Then you get the point of contact, the force is right about here, about two thirds of the way through. So, when you beat him with the left, and you throw that right, my example, by turning the shoulder, this is to hit him with my elbow. It's going to show how far I can go through him with my point of contact. So, bait, bait, turn the shoulder, boom, right down the pipe, hit that game there, yeah, he's knocked out. So, the old one, two. Get in the stance, back hand back, one, you throw the jab, double up maybe, maybe triple, triple, triple. Watch my feet, I'm coming forward, every punch. Every punch, every punch, okay? I'm trying to punch up, keep my head down, stay in tuck and stay in crouch. You throw that right hand, you bring the left back first, of course. And then you turn the shoulder, like I said, and throw that right. So it's like this, and get the elbow up. Forward, every time I throw, slow motion, whoosh, I'm covered, I'm protected. If he tries to go around my jab and he misses me, he's getting tagged because he has to give up his defense to go to my body. So I'll sell out a bit on my body, which is one reason I like moving left because I move away. 
Because if he tries to get me, he has to drop his guard, and he's going to get caught with my jab. So again, no one, two. Da. There. There. Okay. I finish that punch. It's right on back, and I'm covered. Now the next punch, we'll do the left hook. Let's talk about Smoke and Joe Frazier. Devastating left hook. He got famous and known for his knocked out left hook. Very simple. You can see the mechanics on any replay of Smoke and Joe's left, left, left hook. First thing for the left hook is the coil. The jab, you come forward, the right, the turn the shoulder, the left hook is a coil. What's a coil? The coil like a spring. You take that back foot, and that back foot needs to be way up and pointing more straight ahead. And you slap it down. You pretend you have a picture of someone you just don't like at all. Someone that stole your wife or, or boyfriend. And you put their picture right next to your foot, and you want to stomp on it. You want to angrily, a vicious, vicious, mean, 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 mean coil. First move, boom. Now where are my hands? My hands are still here, aren't they? I'm still covered, but I'm already halfway through my punch. So where's the power come from? The coil, elbow up, tip the right shoulder down, and fall through like you're going to kiss your bicep. Why do you want to tip that right shoulder? I'll tell you why. Your power comes from your back and your legs and your leverage. Your legs are moved from movement, position, and power. Your legs are used for movement, position, and power. So you coil, and you're going to get the elbow up to keep the axis across your back, your axis, which is the strength you get. You're going to have to drop that right shoulder. Again, you can see it in any of Smoke and Joe's knockout punches. Left hooks. Coil, drop this right shoulder so the elbow comes up and fall through. Very little wind up. You don't need to go like this. Again, you go like this to throw a hook. You're not that. You go like this, fall through. Elbow high. Watch my feet this time. Coil, elbow up, fall through. Now I'm going to finish my punch. Where am I? I'm protected. I'm using my shoulders and my arm and everything to cover me. If someone wants to beat me and go to my body, they're going to have to miss that left hook first. And they're going to have to give up some defense to hit me. If they don't cover and they try to hit me, they get hit with that. They're knocked out. You know you're throwing a proper left hook. If you can stand there, put your arm like this, and without moving your arm, punch. How would you do that? You keep this like a lot piece of weaponry, a bad A piece of weaponry. You lock it and you fall through. So, up in. See, up up, I mean. Shoulder down, up up. Okay, so, showing Ruben again. Here's some reasons why you want to keep that elbow up. If I don't get that elbow up on my left hook, I'm hitting his D. Simple as that. If I dip down and get my elbow high, I'm going to go right on the top of his D. Look at that, right on the off switch. A lot of guys will drop their hand. They'll drop their hands, they'll drop their hands. Turn, boom, knock down. Again, quick, boom, but you're in the body. If you want to go to the body blow with the left hook, you just drop your elbow. Elbow up to go to the top, elbow down to go to the bottom. You have the same coil. So, thank you. So three punches put together. One, two, three. You go. Keep your stance. Come down. Slow motion. Boom. Back. Elbow up. Boom. Back. Coil. Drop the shoulder. Elbow up. Follow through. So. Now, you'll always notice 
that I will breathe when I hit, when I punch. Let me tell you why you want to breathe when you hit. Some people say, Whoo, you get more power. Eh, it might psych you into more power. The biggest reason you want to breathe when you punch is you release the air from your lungs. If you have a lung full of air and you get hit in the body, it's going to hurt to get the wind knocked out of you. If you exhale when you go, it's not going to hurt as much because we'll get the wind knocked out of you. So you want to exhale. If you take a punch to the chin, how do you protect the ganglia? I'm going to bite down. If you hang your jaw open, your jaw moves. If you bite down, your jaw becomes connected to your skull. If I can bite down and go really hard, that would knock me out. If my jaw was open, I'd knock myself out. If I did my jaw open, I'd bite down. That's where a lot of times. Okay. The old one, two, three. One more time. Stance. Mickey Mouse temples, elbows down, right hand back. Drive the ganglia. So if someone's in this position 
and you kind of dip down with that jab, you hook them right here, and when you turn with the jab, guess what? You're opening them up, boom, to nail them with that uppercut. So, there's five punches. Back to our thing, getting our step, kind of bob and weave, getting in a, in a pendulum motion with a good center of gravity, get your thumbs on your off switches, your Mickey Mouse, get your right hand back, jab, right, hook, right hook, uppercut. Just watch this. See how short those were? That's like eight punches, I guarantee you those eight are hard enough to knock somebody out or break a rib, knock the wind out. Let's talk about a little bit more about the compactness of that. Let's talk about Mike Tyson. Everybody remembers Mike Tyson. When he was 20, 21, 22, he was unbeatable. Look at his style, look at his mechanics. Very compact. Everything he threw was from the pocket, from the holsters. Those uppercuts of his, he'd been down and they'd move this far, he'd knock someone out. That's because he was compact, using his legs, his back, and his shoulders to get that power. So get him the uppercut, boosh, boosh, right? Boosh. The point is there, the thumbs are moving, you can turn them over and throw that. So let's put all those punches together again. Look where my punches end up. Every time I'm punching, I'm not reaching, I'm bringing them right back. I'm in essence hitting them and putting my hand right back where it goes. Best defense there is. Again, if you're up close with somebody, you keep your hands up close. In front. Okay? If you, if you have a punch and say you're getting them with the jab, you're getting with the right hand, stay with it. If I get with the right hand and the right hand's still there, I'm in with the right hand again. Why pull it back? If you, if you have a jab and you got him on target, keep hitting him. Four or five. Jabs in a row, whatever it takes. If you're on that con, on that target, why remove it? Keep it there. If I'm throwing that right hand, and he's still there, I'm gonna throw it again. If I'm on the upper cut, again, I'm gonna throw it again. Put two together. Simple as that. stance of motion. So you want to keep the elbow over your knee, out in front. You throw that right cross. Probably the best punch to follow the right cross with would be a left hook. A right cross is basically like the right hand, but you throw it from back here. Think about someone throwing a shot put. They can take that shot put and throw it 70 or 80 feet. If they wind back like this and do their spin around, and they come from back here. With that right cross, it's the same basic mechanic, the theory behind it. If you're a turn, you're coiled, 
fill that right hand from way back here, and you'll be surprised how you can just turn that shoulder and get so much power by being wound up with the right cross. Let's review these punches from the top. Stand by side by side. Your right hander, take a step forward with your left. Make it so you can rock. Have your back foot pointing out a little bit, about 2% 2 o'clock, with the back heel up. Hands on off switches like a Mickey Mouse. Elbows in. Keep your back hand and back and shield in front. So, double up with that jab. Go to the top. Go to the top. Let's it out. Move left a little bit when you throw it. Work through the sides. If you can't slip a punch, you slip it on the right. But it's best to step left when you throw left. Trust me. So you got the jab. You got the elbow. My head's down. I'm not moving my right, am I? Boom, boom. Coming forward for power. I want to throw that right hand. What do I do? Turn on the shoulder. Once I get this back, elbow up and follow through. Correct? Now I'm in this position. Coil. Drop that right shoulder. Left elbow up. Follow through. It's a body blow. Keep the elbow down. We'll go for the right cross, way back there. The uppercut, the turn, and come up. The big thumpy like tennis ball serve. Put your elbow underneath, bring that right over the top. Those are probably the most basic, simple punches that we can get to right now for boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Hooks, uppercuts, jabs, right hands, right crosses, big overhand rights. Put those together. You practice the movement in front of a mirror. Have a friend watch you. Have them tell you you're dropping your hands. You're dropping your hands. Have them tell you you're not getting your hand on your off switch. Have them tell you you're standing too far. Have them tell you you're reaching with the uppercut rather than staying compact like a Mike Tyson style. Think about developing it. You practice over and over and over again. You develop your muscle memory and you will be a better boxer. You absolutely will. So what's another part of boxing? Let's talk about the next step in boxing. Your defense. You know, boxing isn't so great if you don't have any D. Sure, you can be a great puncher, but you need your defense. Let me tell you the number one rule to tell you to start with your defense. This is how you start. You start by sizing up your opponent. You don't know what your opponent has, unless you research videotapes of them. Maybe he's better than you. Maybe his strength is his jab, his weakness is his uppercut. You know none of this. Maybe he drops his hands, maybe he doesn't. First, most important part, get to know your opponent. That's why you see so many matches where the first, first round, they're kind of bouncing around, and sticking the jabs out, trying to feel each other up. Now, ow, excuse me. Now, these, uh, these gloves, let me tell you why I'm using these gloves instead of boxing gloves. Most of you guys out there watching this, many of you, Maybe MMA. So I'm using MMA gloves. If you're a boxer, of course, I'm using boxing gloves. But MMA is such a popular sport, so I'm going to demonstrate with you with this. And what's the number one thing about MMA, how every single fight starts? You start standing up, facing your opponent. You can be the greatest wrestler in the world, but if you get knocked out, your wrestling ain't going to help you. So it all starts with boxing. Look at your opponent. Size them up, go out there, maybe throw some lazy jabs on him, maybe move around, see what he does. I know I can size an opponent up in five or ten seconds. If they come out and they're standing like this, they're knocked out. If they come out and they're throwing punches like this, they're knocked out. If they see him moving around and they're like jumping and hopping, like a bad whatever, they're knocked out by my boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Size them up, move around, see what they have. So many people always start with the left jab because you can kind of bait them again. You can bring them in. As I demonstrated with Ruben, if you can hit them with your left, you can drill them with your right. So many people, you throw that left out there, they think that's your, your, your distance. You kind of shorten your left a little bit. You don't sell out. They sucker them in. You shorten it, you shorten it, you shorten it. And they start getting closer and closer. And I think that's not how you got. 
guess what? I drew my right shoulder, boom, I got your head knocked off and you're on the ground bleeding. Again, what I left is so important. Size up your opponent, jab's the way to do it. Several different forms of defense. If, uh, if someone is throwing on you, let's do the most simplest form of defense. Number one, keep your hands up, of course. The simplest form of defense is to step back. I mean, I always taught in my college class that I taught at Washington State U, the best defense is the guy doesn't even hit you. Why even waste a bruise on your arm or an impact on your body? Step back so he hits there. So if he throws his punch, I'm stepping back. Now, if you notice, when I step back, what I'm doing is I am taking my gloves off my head. I am not moving my gloves forward. I am moving my head back. I can do that because as long as, you're, as long as you are going back, you don't have to worry about a hook, even a kick. If you're going backwards enough, you can sell out to the front as long as you keep moving back because they're not going to get you with the hook. Where do you look? You watch your opponent's chest. It doesn't matter if you're kicking or hitting or whatever you're doing, it all starts right here in your center. You kick, you move here first. You punch, you move here first. No matter what you do, it starts here. That's where I want you to look. You want to focus right there on the opponent. As soon as he throws anything, it's going to move here first. So I want to step back. Again, I'm taking my hands out by moving my head back. If you remember, go back far enough, because if you throw, you'll go back far enough, he throws that right hand, boom, you're tagged. So make sure that when you step back, you're going well back. So if he throws that right hand now, I'm still out of his range. Another form of defense. Is that the mission? The shield. This is like a shield. I don't know if many people teach it that way, but from my experience, this is a shield. He throws that jab, what I can do? Boom, I can catch it right off my shield. Hit it again. Boom, off my shield. Boom, off my shield. Simple as that. Now, I might bring my elbow up a bit, I might bring my elbow up a bit. I'm going to get him caught. If I can get him in this position here, he ain't going to hit me, but I can sure pummel him, can I? So, so you have to step back. You have the shield, okay? You have smother. We talk about the uh, point of contact. You can take the point of contact away by smothering. So if, if you move in too close, he's not going to get any power on his punches because you're too close. Okay. Another form of defense is, of course, the bob and weave. He throws, you bob and you weave. Okay? Don't bob. You bob and you weave, right? You really bob and you weave, right? You bob and you weave, right? Lateral. Movement. Because again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you make your box. You don't just circle the guy and make a box. He turns this way, guess what? I make a box this way. Where am I? I'm out here. Our goal is to attack our opponent on their weak side. And that brings me to my next form of heat, the parry. Granted, there may be times, maybe you might parry on the inside to keep your hand here. But generally speaking, I'll always teach my students to parry away from the other hand. To me, it's common sense. You don't want to parry this way. So if he knows boxing one-on-one -on -one and turns his shoulder, boom, I'm tagged. But if I parry him this way, again, he can't hit me. You can take a move like this, and I can hit him with my right, the same hand I paired with. Move him like this, and get him with a jab. Or if he's going to freeze and not move out of the way, boom, 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 I'll just pummel him with a, with a combination. Same with this other way. He throws this hand, boom. Move this way. He throws this hand, boom. Again, I got his arm. He can't move. I have him out of position, and I can just club him and his kid. Okay. So, several forms of D with that. If you look at some of the greats like Sugar Ray Leonard, they'd stand there like this, and toy with the guy, and just move their head around, and I put his hand aside and laugh at the guy's face. That is ring Saudi. This is boxing 101, not 301. So I'm not going to teach you how to do that. You just keep your hands up so he throws that stuff through there. If you catch a punch here on the guy, again, I say, well, let's throw that. You don't have to wind up a short punch. If he throws me here and I catch him here, guess what? Guess what? Look, 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 where, my, look where my hand is. It's this far off his chin. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use my legs and take him out with my block. I can use my block as a punch and then follow up on that. So if you stay compact, you come in sideways, you throw a step, you step back, you step around, you're moving like that, and then you bait a little bit with this. Boom! 
Okay. Obviously, this isn't a ring, but we do what we can. Okay. So, to review the defense. Number one, your feet. Does it? Back out of the stance. Remember, go far enough to look out for that right. Number two, you throw it. Use your shield. Boom. You can make them do what I call eat your elbow. You can, if you want to go what I also call go through somebody, it's called going through them. They throw something, you make them eat your elbow. Stick that elbow right up in their face, make them eat it. Go through them. So, you go right through your man. Okay. Just a, just a little canvas about the side. A little, little block and weave onto this side, right? Simple. The, the parry, which again, you want to go away from the other hand. Again, I'll repeat myself. Granted, you could go this way at times, but you better look out. If he knows boxing one-on-one, -on -one, he's turning that shoulder, and you're opening yourself up to get clobbered. Hey guys, try not to reach out with that parry. Keep your arm locked at a good 90 when you parry. That way, if you're getting pump faked, you're still home for the defense. Don't forget, and look out for those fakes. There are so many different fundamentals with boxing. In different points of view. Again, when you're in the ring, experience will dictate. Things will vary a bit. You're not going to always be like this the whole time, obviously. Your time's going to drop your hands a bit. But when you come within striking range and you're getting set, you get to your boxing one-on-one. -on -one. You keep them hands up. You keep them where they go. You stay compact. You, you protect your body with your arms. You protect your, your head with your hands. You don't drop your hands without bringing your head with you. You bob and you weave and you move. You keep your hands home. You get your elbows up. You shorten stuff out. And you do it all. Practice these methods over and over and over again. Develop your muscle memory. Have a friend help you and critique you on the mistakes you make so you can learn. Or if you don't have any friends, watch yourself in a mirror. You do these things with develop muscle memory, you will be a better boxer. Thank you, Ruben Baca. Have a good time and go learn to knock someone out. Thank you. Hey guys, don't touch that dial. We're about to go rip on the bag. But before we do, let me give you a tip on how to beat a southpaw. The one that gets outside the other one's front foot wins. Throw that straight right. If you're the southpaw, throw that straight left. But don't forget, the one that gets outside the front foot wins. Now let's go rip on the bag. Hey Rich, why are we here today? Okay, we're here to teach you boxing one-on-one. Not everybody has a ring in their backyard or an opponent, so most of you have a dummy bag, a heavy bag, whichever you want to call it. Now granted, most opponents won't be hanging upside down from the ceiling for you to hit freely. But as it will help you develop your, your combinations, focus on what we talked about, and keeping the elbows up and things like that, and the footwork. And whenever I hit the dummy bag, which you're about to see, I pretend it has four arms and is trying to kill me. I don't just stand there and do this. I'm gonna hit this bag like it's trying to hit me back with four arms. Using my boxing one-on-one, -on -one, a couple of different things. This is a person, right? Double clutch. A double clutch is a great defense. Fakes work, right? You fake the right, someone bites on the right, boom! With the left, excuse me, you throw the right. Somebody, you, you fake the right, and make the left. Maybe you fake the right, then throw the right. Maybe you fake the left, then throw two lefts. One of the keys to punching is you want to mix it up. And again, there are people out there where if you just go like this is all, they'll sell out and come at you and lead with their chin. Those are the people I like to fight, the ones that lead with their chin. So you can do as little bit as this, and some people will bite and come on you. Do a double clutch, throw a right. A couple of rights, fake a left, throw a right. Do another couple of rights, fake a right, throw a right. A couple of lefts, do the right. Do the combo. They're not throwing their hands in front of me. Now, if 
you notice when I punch, catching my breath, I use my body position I'm in for the next punch. If I throw it right and I'm turning like this, oh, I throw my left. I throw my left, I'm turning like this, throw the right. If I throw an uppercut, I'm in position to you. You, in essence, do not want to throw a punch and then throw something up and work for you. Throw a punch and in that position you're in, throw something that does work for you. So again, anytime before I hit a bag, I make myself angry. If you get in the ring to fight someone, make yourself angry. Cool, collected, but angry. Like that. And the bag wants to take my wife and my children, and I'm gonna kill the bag before it does. So here we go. Angry, angry, jam down, little angles. Look at my hands. They're always in the door. I'm using my hand. Five position. And I breathe. Okay, I get done, my hands are always back. I'm moving. A moving target is much harder to hit than a stationary target. Obviously, keep moving. One more punch. I want to share the MMA guys. Your spleen is right here. You hit some of the spleen, they're going down. Professional football players have had their careers ended by getting hit in the spleen too hard. If you're in boxing, you have to hit with the front of your hand. Step out, turn, get the elbow down, because a body blow, and hit the spleen. If you're in MMA, you can hammer fist. Lean on your opponent. Lean him and pin him and hold him and take that hammer fist. Beat the heck out of this plane. Hold him, pound him. It's also a good resting punch. You go on with your fight, you might get tired. You lean on your guy. A great resting punch is that. You're boxing, turn it. MMA, rest the guy, and put him to his knees by attacking his spleen. So remember, if you don't have any friends to box, Treat this bag like it's your worst enemy. Remove. Step left, go left. Step left, go left. To the shoulder to the right. To the right. Then double to the left. Left the butt, left the head. Left the face, left the hook. Face hook. The right hand's always here. Double. Fake, throw. Fake, throw. Fake, make a double left. Mix them up. Practice. Always think about your elbows high, staying low. Don't need your off switches unless you're throwing a punch. Otherwise, you're home. Got it?